Well, good morning. It's uh, Dr. Kremen. It's about 10 o'clock here on Wednesday morning. I uh, thought I'd uh, post the video earlier today so that you have some time to think about the uh, the paper that you're working on and also the uh, the reading for this week, the Mike Rose piece. We talked about the uh, the Toni Morrison. Oh, by the way, I have one of the cats here. This is Smokey, as you can see. Uh, she's trying to join me. As soon as I put up the, uh, the computer, she decided to, to come visit me here, but I don't know if she's going to come back or not. We'll see. Um, she's off doing her own work, I guess, this morning. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about the uh, Mike Rose piece. Uh, it was great meeting you all on Monday night. Um, I hope um, hope you had a good class. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please email me. If you'd like me to read a draft of the paper, I'd be happy to do so. Um, and this is the, pretty much the structure that we're going to have uh, for you know for the semester where we meet on Monday nights. And then on Wednesday or Thursday morning, uh, I'll post a new video uh, that primarily talks about the uh, the reading that we're focusing on uh, for that particular week. Although, uh, you know, I'll also mention some some details here as you're about to see on the paper itself. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the Mike Rose piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen share and I'm just going to show you two parts of it that I think are really significant uh, and are meaningful and that might also be helpful for you as you are working on your paper. So let me do the screen share. And there's two main sections uh, of the Mike Rose piece that I want to talk about, because as I mentioned in class on Monday night, I think of the Mike Rose essay as being a model. It's a model essay to use for this particular paper. You're going to reference him or Tony Morrison, if you'd like to, at the end of the paper as a, as a quotation at the very end of it. Um, but your main goal is to think about how you can write about your own job, your own work experience, uh, in a similar way to the way that Mike Rose does it, where he's breaking down the details on his mother's work or the way he breaks down the details on his, um, you know, his uncle Joe's work at the GM factory. So let me, let me, uh, like I said, go to the screen share here. Um, if you see the tail, you probably, well, there she is. Okay, so Smokey is back. She's returned. She's sitting on my drawing table right now. So if you hear her nibbling on anything, like on my brushes, don't worry about it. Um, she sometimes likes to get on here because the sun, um, my window here in my office faces east. Uh, so this time of the day, there's a lot of sun coming up. I think she'd also really like to be sitting on my desk chair right now. Um, but, you know, she's uh, she's off doing whatever it is. Well, there's her tail. Well, anyway, let me go to the screen share and uh, and then we'll show you a little bit about this essay. So here we go. I've got two portions of it that I really wanted to focus on. This is the very beginning part of the essay. And as I mentioned in class on Monday night, this piece is really divided into three parts. There's the first part about his mother uh, and the way she, he sort of focuses on her work in the diner when she, he was a kid. And then there's also the section on his uncle and you know the GM factory. And then lastly, of course, he gets into the details um, on his own work as a teacher and his thesis, which we talked about in class on Monday night. He's got his main idea or concept that he's trying to get across about that sort of uh, the idea of fairness, the idea of, of respecting all different types of work, of paying tribute to these different types of work, no matter what it is, whether it's, as he calls them, white collar jobs or blue collar jobs, working class jobs. And so in the first part of it, just to kind of give you an idea uh, of elements that would probably be helpful for you is take a careful look at the way that he describes what he remembers of watching his mom at work. And there's a lot of good examples of that. You know, here I am at the very beginning of the article, Again, this is on the American Scholar. You can link to this, um, you know, on Blackboard, or you can link to it on the directions themselves because there's another link there. And there's some really good descriptive details in here, which you might think about using for your own writing as you're writing about your work experience. So, for example, look at the second paragraph where he says, uh, there wasn't much for a child to do at the restaurants. And so as the hours stretched out, I watched the cooks and waitresses and listened to what they said. At mealtimes, the pace of the kitchen staff and the din from customers picked up. Weaving in and out around the room, waitresses worn behind you in impassive but urgent voices. Standing at the service window facing the kitchen, they called out abbreviated orders. Fry four on two, my mother would say as she clipped a check onto the metal wheel. Her tables were deuces, four tops, or six tops, according to their size. Seating errors also were nicknamed. The racetrack, for instance, was the fast turnover front section. Lingo conferred the authority and signaled know-how. So that whole paragraph, as you can kind of see here, without <laughs> my, my dictionary popping up, um, is all the, the dialogue, the conversations that were happening at work, or even the specialized language. So that might be something that you can incorporate into your papers in a work experience that you've had, or a volunteer experience. Some of you mentioned after class on Monday night that you might be doing that instead. Um, there's a lot of, lot of use of very specific kinds of language. So in this case, when she's using phrases like fry four on two, or deuces, four tops, you know, the racetrack, um, you know, more specialized language that's part of the work experience or the workplace, 
that might be something that you can include in your paper as well. That that what the the elements that give it the atmosphere, the atmosphere of what it was like to work at the particular place that you're describing. Was there particular language that you used? Um, were there particular uh, uh, other people that were interesting? Were there were there situations that you want to describe in more detail? And he does that as well. You'll notice he gives a lot of those sorts of details um, about both her and about his uncle. But then what he also does is that he leads up to um, you know some some conclusions about that. Let me let me just enlarge this here a little bit too, so that you can kind of see this um, a little bit better. Um, so as he goes on, he describes more about her work and you know the. Um, you know, the interactions that she had at work. And then finally, uh, what she's, what he says here, and I'm about three, let's see, second, third, fourth paragraph in, um, he starts talking about her interest in psychology, right? And so how she had to navigate uh, the different people that she worked with. And this was something um, that we talked about, or at least touched on a little bit on Monday night, this paragraph, you know, about four paragraphs into the essay is really significant as well. And he says this, of course, there were the customers who entered the restaurant with all sorts of needs from physiological ones, um, including the emotions that accompany hunger to a sometimes complicated desire for human contact, people that maybe were lonely and came into the diner on a regular basis uh, to have conversations. Uh, and his descriptions here are really good. He, As I mentioned in Monday Night, this is not a traditionally structured sort of an essay. Um, you know, it doesn't start with the thesis. It actually starts initially. Oh, sorry about that. That's uh, the cat just knocked over one of my guitars, but that's okay. We'll we'll, we'll continue. She's okay. Um, she gets a little excited when I have to do these videos. Um, so she's sort of describing here um, the psychological challenges and gives a lot of descriptions on that. So it says her tip depended on how well she responded to these different needs of the customers. So she became adept at reading certain social cues and managing feelings, both the customers and her own. No wonder then that Rosie was intrigued by psychology. The restaurant became the place where she studied human behavior, puzzling out the problems of her customers and refining her ability to deal with people in a difficult world. She took pride in, he says, being among the public, she'd say. There isn't a day that goes by in the restaurant that you don't learn something. So that might be another thing to think about with your essay. You should give the descriptions as he does. And as I mentioned, there's no thesis at the beginning of this. He waits to the very end of it to give the thesis. And then he goes into the descriptions, eventually leading up to the interest that his mother had in psychology, um, in, in her customers, in interacting with her customers and, and with her coworkers. So that's some of the details that he uh, he includes there. Now, I want to go give you one other example from later in the article, and I've called that up here as well, where he talks a little about a little bit about his uncle. Uh, you know, he says, this is towards the middle. He says, in addition, Joe learned about budgets and management. He came off the line. He did a perspective of workers' needs and management demands. He believed that rotation would allow assembly assemblers to get longer and more frequent breaks. So he was trying to think about how to make the workplace, uh, this you know, automotive factory more efficient, uh, more more equitable for his fellow workers, you know, more more uh, um, you know uh, more pro more profitable for the company itself, and so he had to sort of teach himself how to do some of that uh, some of that work, and so that's really what the second half of the essay is about: is how did he sort of educate himself in the workplace, much like Rose's mom did in the first half. But then what he does here is he goes into um, his own sort of analysis. And again, this is really not a major part of the paper that you're working on. You're really focusing more on your descriptions. You know, what was it like to work there? Uh, what was it like, um, you know, what were the skills that you needed to develop in order to be effective uh, at, at the workplace? But then he does give some other additional analysis. And that's really more what the end of this paper is, where I'm asking you to sort of respond to Rose and give sort of a comparison uh, to some of his um, his ideas or his concepts. Now, again, I mentioned, and I'll put this up in the notes I'll, I'll post uh, this morning as well, that when you're writing about, um, you know, Rose and um, or writing uh, writing about your job, I should say, and then responding to some of these ideas in our readings, you may also want to look at the, the more uh, general concepts that the writers are dealing with. So in this particular case, just to give you another example, it says here that our culture in Cartesian fashion, and there, there he's referring to the philosopher Rene Descartes, who's probably best known for the phrase, I think, therefore I am, right? Uh, and he says that our culture tends to separate the body from the mind so that, for example, we assume that the use of a tool does not involve any abstraction. We reinforce this notion by defining intelligence solely based on grades in school and numbers on IQ tests. So this is where he's getting closer to his thesis, which is also why in the discussion that we had 
on Monday night about this paper, I mentioned um, leading up to any response to Morrison or to um, to Rose at the very end of the essay, which I mentioned in the directions too, it's really more descriptive. And that's the, that's the case with both of these essays. If you've reread the Morrison on your own, after we talked about it on Monday night and you've read this piece, you know that the bulk of these essays are storytelling, telling stories about these experiences as we sort of did on Monday night. So let me go away from the screen share here a minute and just mention that. Think about a few things as you're writing this paper. And like I said, do the best job you can on it. Take your time with it. Uh, don't get overwhelmed by it. It's your first paper for the semester. Uh, and for some of you, it may have been a while since you've written a, a longer paper for a class. Uh, maybe even a couple of years, and that's not a problem. That's very typical in English 101. So your main goal with this essay, as I mentioned on Monday night, is to be descriptive. Don't take anything for granted, no matter what job it is you're writing about. Um, you know, tell me about it. What was it like? What were the what was what did the physical um, what did the setting of it look like? The place you were working, um, you know, in my case on Monday, I mentioned working at the factory where we made those mirrors for uh, Revlon uh, for the compacts. And so, you know, if I were writing the paper, I might describe what the factory looked like. The factory that I worked in uh, had been built in the 1920s and had been there for a very, very, very long time by the time I was working there in the early 90s. And so I might describe what it was like to punch in in the morning. You know, when did work start? You know, what was it like to get through the morning until you got to a lunch break? You know, what were the other employees like? What did the machines look like? Um, you know, what was it like physically and emotionally to work in that environment? You know, I'd never, uh, you know, I'd been in a couple of factories before because they still existed when I was a kid in the late 70s, early 1980s uh, in, in the area where I grew up. Um, but I'd never worked in one before. And so to have that experience, um, you know, there was a lot of memories that I have of it. So part of this paper is also, as Rose does and as Morrison does, is also asking you to write about your memory, your memory of those particular places and what it was like to work there and what experiences and wisdom you gathered from 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 those um, experiences in those places. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, as when I post this video this morning uh, is I'm also going to po post some reminders about the paper, you know, some additional suggestions that kind of sum up some of what I've mentioned here um, in the video. Uh, as I mentioned on Monday, if you have any questions on it, please email me or, you know, again, feel free to send me a draft and I will take a look at it and give you feedback on that. Um, and I'll be happy to do so. And uh, I, I look forward to reading these essays and to, and to reading more about your job experiences. Now, we'll also discuss uh, the Mike Rose reading together in class uh, next Monday, you know, when we're back together in person. We'll kind of go through that before we jump into some of the uh, articles we're going to read uh, on photography uh, for paper number two, which we'll, you know, talk about more in the second half of class on Monday. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy writing the paper. I hope it brings back some at least interesting memories, if not always good memories. Although remember, you can write about the, both the positive and the negative of the workplace that you that you were uh, working in. Um, and above all, like I said, send me an email if you have any questions. Have a great rest of the day. I'm going to check out and see what my cat Smokey is doing over here. She looks like she's settled down. She's uh, She was trying to crawl up on the shelf, which is what she, she was knocking books and things off. It's probably means she wants to go outside here in a little bit. So I'm going to take her out for a little jaunt on the uh, the back porch while I read over some uh, um, you know some other other uh, material for class. So have a great rest of the day. Um, send me an email if you, if you get a chance and have any questions and I will talk to you later. Bye.